I, I want to call the place Red Roof, but it's not Red Roof. It's called uh, <laughs> We're the Fallen Doves, and this is the Red Shutter Casting Couch. When the camera's on, it's all a big bit of fun on the big red shutter. And welcome back to the Red Shutter Club. I'm excited today because Ben Whitley is outnumbered by Americans <laughs> with, with me today. I have Christopher and Katie. Hello. Good morning or afternoon. Whichever <laughs> it is. Is it afternoon yet? It it's is. It's, <laughs> oh, wow. it's been afternoon the whole time we met at one. <laughs> so you guys are in a band called falling dove yes yeah yeah, yeah. tell us tell us tell us a bit about you where you're from what you're doing in liverpool uh, i first arrived here in 2013. yeah i think um yeah, yeah i'll try to make out with this <laughs> as best i can i arrived out, uh, out here in 2013 by mistake uh the plane <laughs> no no i'm not kidding uh we landed here on our way to sweden and they lost our guitars on the changeover of the planes. This is back when you could do a lot of international flights to John Lennon Airport. And so we were just stuck out here without anything because our show was in for a few days in, in Sweden and we couldn't leave here because we had to wait for the guitars. Yeah. And we met this fella um, at the bus stop and he just started sourcing gigs for us, found us a hostel to stay at, and we just played at the Liverpool restaurant down here on nice docks for food played a lot of places out here for food and drink and as you do and that's how our story got started here eventually caitlin joined when one of the guys in the band got gout and um yeah this is it that's that's really insane yeah yeah i, I love that um so many musicians i know they just found liverpool like just on a chance on a whim you know i mean i, I always wanted to come here and and hang out but when you got four other people that don't have the common interest you know they just didn't then see you the value in it then so you get stuck here on accident and you make them <laughs> yeah <laughs> i wish i would have exactly. been intentional it yeah. was it was kind of scary man because we didn't have a lot of money you know mm -hmm. i had sold a lot of things to come out on that tour and and uh it was uh definitely never been stuck somewhere like that yeah know? so you're also doing a lot of work out in the sefton park area yeah yeah, yeah. So, to continue that whole story, how how on one of the tours, this would have been 2016 or 15. That's how you know you're getting old. 2015 or 2016, we ended up out here, and we were working with this team here in Liverpool. They were doing a recreation of the Beatles from Liverpool to Hamburg, mm -hmm. and um, same way in a little band, uh, us and another band played the Jack. You know, the night, th the same night, and left that same night on the way up mm -hmm. to to Hamburg to play at the Kaiser Keller and the Jack. Or no, what's forgot the name of the place out there? I'm bad with my Beatles trivia today. I can't remember this place that the Beatles played at. Anyways, we ended up there, mm -hmm. and um, we came back and we needed to talk to Pete from the Beatles just to ask him some questions about the trip. Mm -hmm. And we went to you know to his house to look for him, but obviously he doesn't live at um, what is that place? The Casbah anymore? He just a, f a few blocks away from there. Uh, eventually, his brother got a hold of us, and that connected us in some way to the Sefton Park Hotel, which is the home of Stewart. And uh, I got to meet the owner, and when we went there, everything inside the place there was no mention of Stewart other than one little plaque. And the old old there was an older fella in there. He goes, but we have a bunch of stuff here from one of the old owners. And I mean, I'm talking about like signed pieces by Astrid and a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember I was like, I got a little mad because I was like, you don't realize what you have in here, man. Mm -hmm. I go and it's I was very, very mad. I remember that I was like, it's it's this is screwed up. This is like the guy's stuff and you guys just don't have it put up then they sat me in with the actual owner and we started working diligently for the last four and a half years on creating a tribute to Stuart. and painstakingly i work with different artists from around the world that created 
custom art pieces to pay tribute to Stuart and his life. Mm -hmm. So as you go on the first floor, is the family room. A little bit more abilia, kind of like if you were hanging out mm -hmm. at his house, you know. Um, you learn about his family, family heritage. Second floor, you learn about his relationship with John, mm -hmm. going to Hamburg, falling in love. And the third floor, about his life in Germany all the way to death. Mm -hmm. And uh, a beautiful tribute to him as a painter, musician, artist, and poet, and inspiration of the Beatle brand. It's like a big Stuart museum. It's really cool to walk through. That so really sounds lovely. Oh, it is. And, you know, we weren't able to really do a lot of promo because, I guess, the pandemic fell on top of us right as we were ready to mm -hmm. go full gear on everything. But, I mean, you know, as they say, something something special like that is timeless. And and it's proven that to be with Stuart, you know, like no matter when you look at him, he just, he looks like a character out of place. Mm -hmm. He'd be on his years, you know. He looks like he could be just walking around one of these streets in Milan or something like that. So just that, that connection I had with him has always been very vivid, I think, as a, as a teenager. And to be out here and explore that part and be able to bring and push somebody's, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. boys. I had to read books about him, po I mean, massive amounts of poems and things to really understand what he wanted to say to the world, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And and that that was pretty special, man. I got most of the pandemic I spent it at the Sefton Park Hotel just doing reading and just trying to get into his head, you know, what it was like. Yeah. Well, that's really beautiful. That yeah, sounds yeah. like a lovely thing. And when when does that all open up or has it already? It's been open. It's been open um, kind of silently, but you can walk around with your phone. There's little markers on the paintings. You could tap your phone oh, cool. and they'll pull up a video that you can watch on your phone. It's an interactive. Nice. And uh, we have a, a little pop up event, which is the music part of it on the 28 mm -hmm. inside the little cafe upstairs. Mm -hmm. And um, we invite everybody in the community to come out and hang out and spend a beautiful day with us at the Sefton yeah. Park Hotel. Be sure to check that out. But that's my side hustle. You know? Your side hustle. <laughs> All right, then what's the main hustle? Tell us. I play Tell a us. band called The Falling Doves, and we've been very blessed um, with a lot of help from the city to do a lot of stuff. I, I always like to say if it wasn't for the city of Liverpool, probably we wouldn't have gone around the world. Um, the Cavern, shortly around that same type time period, adopted us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've been a resident band every year for the last, mm -hmm. I don't know, eight, nine years. Yeah. And, you know, whenever we get into a situation where we need a little elbow grease, the cavern makes that call for us. And mm -hmm. we're able to get all over. The first time we went around the world was playing Beatle festivals. Mm -hmm. um, the second time, I would say, after we kind of made our name playing some of that stuff, mm -hmm. we got a lecture from John Keats. And he goes, you got to stop doing the Beatles stuff. <laughs> or you're going to be stuck <laughs> doing Beatles stuff. Yeah. So then we just started focusing on our band. And, mm -hmm. and you know, again, went around, asked our band. What but nice. people still ask for Beatles stuff, right? They show up. And we it's, it's yeah, a we delight still play it to here be able there. to do that. Mm -hmm. It's a delight, so. Yeah, well, that's incredible. The Cavern, there there are really so many wonderful people at the Cavern. You know, I have to go to their open mic on a on a Monday night. We're tonight is a special night, tonight. by the way. It yeah. is a special I guess we're all night. Going, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, after party here, man. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know it's a special night. We've been in preparation. <laughs> but um, everyone's just so wonderful and open and welcoming in this city. They really are. They really are. So how about, uh, I guess, back home for you guys? What does the scene look like there? What's some of your experience back in the States? Because we don't often get that perspective. You know, just like... Um, I would say just like the way things have been and changed and moved around the last few years, um, the pandemic kind of changed everything. You know, I would say prior to the end of the pandemic or before the pandemic started, we had it pretty good, man, because, you know, like... January, February, we were in Australia. Mm -hmm. March and April, we would be like in Norway. Uh, May, June, July would be roaming around here. August, September would be out in Japan. Mm -hmm. October, November out like in Latin America or a new country. So we weren't really up in, in the States as much. Yeah. Um, and that, that, that happened. We are having a, f a good time for the last three years before the pandemic mm -hmm. hit hard. We were making good money too. And after that kind of hit, you know, we had to rebuild again because a lot of mm -hmm. the venues, 
closed. A lot of the places weren't what they used yeah. to be. Or and got new owners. Mm-hmm. And, and, and a lot of people retired. So then you have to, again, go out and redo everything again. Mm-hmm. And so she's been lovely helping me rebuild. She's been around the world with me. Uh, originally, Katie was doing uh, merch for the band mm-hmm. and doing Cajon. Technically started as, yeah, a Cajon player mm-hmm. and then turned into a merch girl and then turned into a singer. And now I'm the bass Just player. Just a backup singer. <laughs> yeah, she took yeah. So it's been great growth for, for... I've been touring with the band for about two years. Yeah. That's a crazy. This is my uh, third time out here. I love it in Liverpool. Isn't <laughs> it great? It's it reminds me of my hometown. It's wonderful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. From Oregon, this one. Yeah, Portland, Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Very vibrant culture in both cities, yeah. So that's where we're at. And we brought uh the original members last year. We did two tours last year of the UK, up and down, with the original lineup of the people that made the records with mm-hmm. me, which was rare because a lot of them are either getting married or just slowing down. Mm-hmm. Uh, the drummer that's toured with me for years, and he's about to retire. He's about, what, 70-something? Yeah, like 72. Yeah. Wow. That's what we The last tour, we came out here with him, and he was all right, but we were like, we we got to start leaving him at home. He's a liability. Well, he doesn't want something to happen to him and bring him home in a shoebox, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so. I mean, that's fair. Got to walk around with him covered in, like, fragile tape. Yeah. We always used to make this joke that, one day he was just going to play the drums and just turn into dust. <laughs> <laughs> a grand <laughs> exit. The final bang. That's got to be the finale yeah. of your encore song. Just <laughs> but that's 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 our story with the band. And, and back in the States, like I said, things are barely picking up again. Um, we are blessed that because of the work history that we have, um, we do get a little bit of special treatment with events mm-hmm. and shows. Um, you're American, so we have a band called Collective Soul from the 90s mm-hmm. we're playing a big big gigantic show with them we played mm-hmm. with echo and the bunny men out there we've toured with uh um a few other bands we actually we took uh uh a, a barry sudden out there once mm-hmm. and i get this we did a whole tour and i get this call from a lawyer that represented lee mabers mm-hmm. he got pissed it's like you got me calling the, the, this the laws and I, was, I go well i didn't know anything about anything <laughs> this, this man said he this was his band you know but We'll um, leave controversy for a different chat. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but locally when he called, the tour was already done. So <laughs> there was no suing that could be done. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, mm. I think um, we ought to leave it on. There's two questions that I ask everybody who's on the show. Yep. And I think these answers might be interesting because you've had you've you've kind of been in the scene for a while. Um, but you're you're in and out, so you might remember some people um, who Ben and I wouldn't have known only being in the scene for a year. Um, so first question is is what is a song by a local artist here? If if you have one that you wish you wrote that is just so good, you're like oh. I, oh, I, I really love the. Uh, oh man, you have so many great bands here. You know, I really like like a lot of the stuff Lee Mabers did, but mm-hmm. I'm going to go with Echo and the Bunny Men, and I'm going to go into the Killing Men. I just love him as a writer and spend yeah. such good times with him, yeah. talking music, and he's very, very, a, a real poet, a real writer. He speaks mm-hmm. how he writes, and yeah. I would I wish I would have written that. All right, and second question. The whole Liverpool music scene across the generations goes head to head in the octagon. Who's coming out? To fight? Who's coming out on top, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you know, we'd probably put Pete Best at the front because, he, he, you know, he's a boxer. Yeah, 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 I yeah. Probably he's going there punching. He's a strong fella, too. <laughs> Almost broke my arm when I met him, man. He's, like, ah. <laughs> he's got big wrists. But, yeah, we, we would totally probably come out. You know, I love the Manchester scene, and and, and I really do do love um, the elaboration and, and collaboration of the writers out there. And, mm-hmm. and, but... Um, I like the simplicity of the Liverpool way of life and, and, and the writing. So, you know, I, they don't take themselves that serious. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Versus, you know, the, the Mancunians are a little like, you can't really crack too much of a smile there. Yeah. They're too serious for their own good. Mm-hmm. And the Scousers just kind of put a little bit more 
fun into things. Yeah. And that's I was going to say fuckery, but f- I guess fun is also. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I mean, both table. are valid. <laughs> both are valid. There is. A, there is. A, and I think that that's, you know, that's really the way you should really live life, you know, not take things too serious. I remember you were asking me earlier, you know, what's a big flex. So, you know what? I, I remember coming here from the States and we were the whole band. You look like fucking out of a Guns N' Roses music video mm-hmm. too much, you know. And and that's the thing that we learned out here, living out here. You want to just kind of keep a low profile. You still be yourself, but not fucking yeah. boast about anything. So it, it keeps you, Liverpool keeps you humble. Yeah. And I think with that, we should head off to our couch concert. All right. The casting couch. <laughs> so we're going to we're going to stay here for a second. Pretend you've already played mm-hmm. and do our sign off. OK. So is it just going to be you playing or are you both? She might be singing backups. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't have my bass. Sush has my bass. I wish you had bastard. your cajon. I have a cajon. Yeah, Let's see if we can pull it off. But yeah. I have a cajon, I can't sing. So okay. Vocals. So well, fine. either way, it'll be both of you. So. All right. Deal. So I can say plural. Okay. So. <laughs> I, I want to call the place Red Roof, but it's not Red Roof. It's <laughs> called. Uh, <laughs> we're the Fallen Dubs, and this is the Red Shutter Casting Couch. <laughs> lovely you guys thank, thank you, you so much it was so hot over there <laughs> <laughs> i'm not used to being on people's couches unless <laughs> i gave up acting a long time ago but <laughs> you know, i couldn't have thought about a better person to, to have uh, audition for <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know how to respond to that <laughs> well anyways is there anything you'd like to plug before we go, maybe some headshots. Come visit yeah, acting us bios. at the Sefton Park Hotel. Come see the wonderful things that we have in there to offer mm-hmm. to bring back to the city of Liverpool. Mm-hmm. And check out the Falling Doves at Falling Doves Music or FallingDoves.com. Anything else, Katie? I think you covered all the bases. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Well, with that, thank you guys so much for joining us today. And thank you so much for tuning in. I love the smell of your clothes. Stand by the mirror alone Oh, let me call you my own Let me call you my own I won't take too long to turn on
Prince Ramon Coleman. I'm sorry, is there a problem with the standard four piece rock band? Yeah, you want in one of them? All right, so hello and welcome back to the Ow. Red Shutter Club. I'm here today with uh, Sweeney, Liam Sweeney. It's good to be here. Yeah, it's yeah, a pleasure. Man. Good to have you here, Sweeney. Now, I do call you Sweeney all the time. Yeah, you've never, you've never called me Liam before. I, don't I think. refuse to yeah. call him Liam. Am I the only person that calls you by your surname? Uh, I mean, old school friends do, but you're the only one. Yeah. On the scene, on the local scene, who says Sweeney, really. You yeah. know, well, I, just I, I, don't, I don't mind it, you know. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I was going to say, I can call you Liam in the interview if you want me to. You call me anything you want. <laughs> you can call me anytime. Mm. Um, so, we've met on the open mic scene. We probably met at Ditto or something like that. Yeah, I think it was so somewhere like Ditto. Or yeah. maybe... I mean, I don't go to the cavern often, but it might have been the cavern, I'm not sure. Yeah. But I go, I go to the cavern occasionally. But it might have been somewhere like that. Mm. It'll, it'll be one of them. Like but you, or you are an open mic fiend. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of an, of an obsession, really. The open mics, you know, I call it a healthy addiction. You know, it's it's been an important part of my development. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, well, why do you think that is? Um, I'd say just just seeing so much talent on the scene. You know, it's, it's inspirational. Like p- people inspire me. You know, to improve, to, k- to keep developing, to keep getting better. Um, I'd just say, yeah, the, just, just the amount of talent in the local scene is inspirational. And I just want to keep keep progressing, really, and keep keep developing. And I think open mics help me do that, really. Um, they are they are a nice creative space, mm. and it's a safe space for people yeah, to just come out yeah. with new things. Because that's how you yeah. develop. you gotta you got to yeah. do it wrong. I mean, ev- everyone's supportive as well. And I've met a lot of good people, you know, yeah. on the scene. So um I mean like yeah. John Witherspoon said in his uh episode it's really a different scene. It's a very special scene at the moment. Like he yeah. talks about being part of the scene 10 years ago and he's yeah, like yeah. people people didn't sing each other songs. Right. Yeah. Like it's it really is a different sort of community here, which is really cool. Yeah, it's brilliant, yeah. yeah. Long may continue. Yeah. And I think you are probably one of the artists that just churns out the most material. Yeah. Do you live in the studio? Is that? I mean, I, I try and record as much as I can. Really, um, I just want to get me get me stuff out there as much as I can. Mm-hmm. And you know, the tough part is getting people to listen to what you yeah. what you put out. That's the tough part. But as long as I'm consistent in what I do, I feel eventually, mm-hmm. you know, more and more people will listen. The more, the more consistent I am, so I think I think consistency is m- important. Yeah. Well, what's the what's the goal down the line? What are you working towards? Um, on that yeah, just keep 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 progressing steadily. I'd, I'd say get more gigs. Um, that that you know, just keep developing as a musician. Uh, hopefully, get more gigs and stuff, and just get myself seen more. You know, mm-hmm. and hopefully get more opportunities. Yeah. So that's that's the, that's the goal. Um, yeah, that's the goal. Just keep progressing steadily, and hopefully, good things will come. No, I know. Um, uh, I, I think it was at the Belvedere. I think again, it was John Witherspoon. Right. He mentioned that you do something very specific with your writing process. How it's um, very like just writing purely from the subconscious. Yeah, John said something like that. Yeah, um, he said something like I write from the subconscious, and I, I do agree with that. Yeah, because um, it just comes. You know, I, I don't think of what I'm going to write about. Really, it just comes and. It's quite random. Um, it, it's usually the words first, so I, I write a story uh, initially. It's like a story, and then I build I build the song around around the words. But yeah, um, it usually develops into a story of sorts. Mm-hmm. But I, d- I don't know what I'm going to write about when I write. I sort of write a few lines and then I sort of build it around, mm-hmm. b- build the song around that. Really, can you can you sit down and make yourself write? Say I'm going to write a song, or does it just it, does it only happen when it happens? Um, it's quite spontaneous, really. Um, I mean, I, I can sit down and write a song, but it'll take a lot longer than w- what I hope for, really. Mm-hmm. I, I, th- I think the best songs come like spontaneously. Because yeah. um, I'm still trying to figure that part out. I know that unless I have an idea in the back of my mind, yeah. I can't write a song there are yeah. very few times yeah. where I think that that's not the case. But uh, like Caitlin Eve, um, she would talk about like 
write a song every day. And I'm like, I yeah. do you know, it would take me five hours to mm. write something yeah. really shit if I didn't have yeah. an idea. <laughs> I mean, usually with me, there's a title first. I come up with a title. Really? Like sh- something comes to me, like, uh, randomly a title in my mind. Yeah. And then I just put it on me f- on my phone and then build the story around the title. Um, so yeah, that comes to me quite often. Like titles usually come first. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I see my stuff as like storytelling. Like that's the, that's the kind of music I do really. Like uh, me, me, me mate Luke says to me, you should call your genre film folk um, because I'm, I'm inspired by by cinema and books and stuff, and yeah. so so that inspires me a lot. Like. Yeah. Films and literature and stuff, yeah. you know. Well, that's a, it's um, especially in the folk genre. There's a lot of storytellers. That's a big part of, of yeah, folk, yeah. Folk, I think it's a, it's a big part of folk. Yeah, yeah. yeah what definitely. brought you to folk? Uh, I mean, I've always loved folk music. I've always loved Dylan, um, Bruce Springsteen. Big, big, big fan of Springsteen. Um, a lot of the early stuff was very folk ori- orientated. Um, so a lot of, you know, a, a lot of my heroes pl- uh, played folk, so I was inspired by a lot of my heroes, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you've seen Springsteen, haven't you? Yeah, I've seen Springsteen in Dublin last month. Yeah, yeah, it was um, yeah, inspiring. Yeah, mm-hmm. loved that. And then I learned that same night that my mom saw Springsteen back in the day. Yeah, the yeah. secrets Heather does not tell me. Yeah, yeah, I, f- I found out before you, didn't I? You did yeah, find yeah, out yeah. before me. And ditto, yeah. Rock and roll, yeah. But I just feel that seeing your heroes, you don't want to copy your heroes, but you you, you take something from them. You, you, yeah. You're inspired by them, but you, you want to find your own sort of... Yeah. You want to find your own thing, but... I find that I regress to my heroes. Regress, If yeah. that makes sense. Well, regress maybe is not the best mm. word, but I find that I always kind of go back to it. Right, yeah. Like, um... Uh, I think that I grew up uh, watching my uncles perform right, yeah. and yeah. kind of learning from them. And they they would teach me things on the guitar and mm. about performing. Um, and the more that I go into music, the more I go into their genres. Right, the yeah. more that I lean into sort of yeah. their style. It's weird. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's important finding your own style, but I think everyone's inspired by something aren't they everyone takes things off of yeah. people they listen to because it's all been done before really like music's you know it goes in cycles like it's all been done yeah so you've just got to put your own you know your own stamp yeah. on it really I mean there's only know. what 12 notes yeah um, you know uh, yeah I think so what are you laughing <laughs> at uh-uh. I might have to fire the set director no okay Give him another chance, you know. Thanks, Liam. Go feed the kids, man. <laughs> the kids. I thought you. I thought you said you were six in yesterday's. <laughs> so, because you spend so much time in the studio, tell us a bit about that process. Yeah, I mean, like like I said, I try and record as much as I can. Um, try and release as much stuff as I can. Um, I think working with different people, different producers, as you know, is good in terms of like learning how things work in a studio. Mm-hmm. So, I've worked with a few different people. And yeah, just just learning things in the studio, I, I find that I, I develop by by doing that really. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's just a great experience working in the, working in the studio and releasing songs. I just want to keep doing it really. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Just I don't think there's a better feeling being in the studio and recording music and re- releasing music. Just just you know, it's a good feeling. You it's know. a very anxious feeling. It's very anxious, yeah. yeah. But that's the next step, really. I think finding. My m- own back and band and perform my songs within a band environment. So, any of you out there watching? Sweeney's yeah. hiring. Get in touch, yeah. Get in touch. What instruments are you after? Uh, I'm after like a big sound, um, like violin, trumpet, saxophone, um, keyboards, um, bass, you know, just a, a big. As ensemble of people really yeah. sort of like an orchestra like like a rock orchestra well um what you ever do LSD Ben um, I don't think I would no uh, no w- w- would you Ben have you already done that? will they 
well, people do say LSD is good with creativity, you know, you know. Uh, there's two questions that I'm asking everybody. Yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. What is a song in the open mic scene that you've heard that you wish you wrote? I wish you'd vote. I mean, there's so many. I mean, there's so m- there's so much talent on the scene. It's 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 incredible. Like the amount of talent. Um, does it have to be one, or can it be? You a few? can list as many as you want. I'd say Ben Whitley, all along the line. It's a great song. That's the second one that we've had um, for Ben. Let me think of a few of us. A lot of John Witherspoon's music is is is, is inspirational. Um, Dublin on my mind. That that's one of the mm. songs I, w- I wish I'd vote. Love that song. Um, I, I think I think John Witherspoon. I think I think his songwriting is incredible. Like mm-hmm. I think he's, in my eyes, he's the, he's the top dog. I think John. Mm-hmm. You hear that, John? Um, this episode is sponsored by John Witherspoon. Yeah, I, th- <laughs> I think he, he. I'd say he's my hero on the local scene. Mm-hmm. I've got obviously I've got famous heroes, but lo- locally I'd say. On the local scene, John with the spoons. Locally, it's our John Higginbottom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On the local scene, John's me, me musical hero. Yeah, yeah that's that's it. Um, all right. Second question: the entire music scene mm. thrown into an octagon. Onto. An octagon. Like right. Yeah. MMA. Who wins? Who wins? Um. So what? What are they thrown into again? Sorry entire music scene is Into put up to fight oh so in a fight who'd win in a fight oh it's a tough I'll have, to, I'll have to think make sure you're on the mic for this one we gotta get you clear loud and clear I think Camille you think yeah I think Camille yeah I think oh. I think he'd win explain mm. your choice I don't know he just seems like a dark horse really he's quite a dark horse you know he's, he's very kind and very you know, sociable and kind, but I think if you, if you pushed him, he'd um, he can look after himself. You know. All right, we've got one vote for Camille. Yeah. So I think with that, we ought to head off to our couch concert. Brilliant. Yeah. Do you know what you're going to be playing for us today? Uh, it's a song called "Train of Perdition." A, um, a, a song that I believe our Ben Whitley. Yeah, Ben. Um, he set a challenge a few months ago to write a train song. And I wouldn't have wrote the song without without, without Ben, really, so I, I dedicate the song to Ben. Oh, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. 
some train of British and she breaks down in tears and enough of it all she sighs she then recovers she then discovers she can turn the tide oh lady Jane on this train What a what a lovely what a lovely song that was dedicated to our benefer. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Sweetie. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. Been a pleasure. Is there anything you want to plug? Um, yeah, you can find me on socials at Liam Sweeney Music. Um, I'm on Spotify. Um, just type my name into Spotify, and you'll find quite a lot of material. And there's more to come. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, with that, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Oh, Jay! Yeah.